You, me, and HIFMB. Stories of science and the sea. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the next episode of the HIFMB podcast. This one is all about science communication. We have Gemma Martinez Mendes from Spain and Rebecca Borges from Brazil as our guests. They both uh, work on a science communication project called Once Upon a Time. It's a collection of different fairy tales about different uh, scientific projects or different scientific studies that are then told in a fairy tale setting. So the second edition of their fairy tale collection book has just launched or has, has launched recently. And they're very keen to do a third one. So maybe if you want to be involved in the third edition of these fairy tale, scientific fairy tales, maybe give them an email. They'll be keen to work with you, I'm sure. And without further ado, I give you Gemma and Rebecca. Okay, everybody. Hi, and welcome to the next episode of the HFMB podcast. And today uh, it's all about science communication with Gemma and Rebecca. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hi. So you, um, we, we were just talking uh, before the recording about what you consider yourself. And it's a bit complicated, I think, or, or a bit complex. Yeah, I can yeah. start because I think yeah. uh, in my case it's less complex than mm -hmm. in Rebecca's case. <laughs> So I will go for, for the easy part saying that I am a marine scientist because my bachelor is called marine sciences indeed. Yeah. And then I have been working in marine sciences, although in the past for, for most of my career mm -hmm. until I started here as scientific coordinator. Have you always worked on marine um, things? Yeah, on yeah. marine things. Yeah. yeah. Okay, marine scientist. <laughs> marine scientist it is. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, in my case, I mean, I'm still like trying to find out what I am. Yeah. <laughs> Until very recently, I was telling you, I just called myself a marine ecologist. Mm -hmm. Also, because it sounds, I guess, easier to understand or even like a marine biologist when I'm talking to people that are not, you know, from, from the area. So yeah, yeah, I'm I do a the marine same. biologist and yeah. usually people love to hear that. You yeah. know, like a marine <laughs> biologist, like, oh, I've always wanted to be a marine biologist. Yes, That's exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah. People immediately identify with the term and it sounds easy to understand and you know yeah I know what you mean yeah but <laughs> when it comes to like I don't know reflecting about it and it's it's a tough cookie I have been thinking about it a lot and <laughs> I mean I started out I have like this uh, background this training in biology right so like hardcore natural sciences that's and your bachelor's is it yeah, yeah okay a bachelor's so biological sciences it was called and you know like very a lot of statistics and you know mm -hmm. along the way I worked with some algorithms and software and yeah. <laughs> and I always thought of myself as a biologist but recently actually since the PhD I've been trying to move like towards the social sciences yeah. and especially towards geography yeah so yeah I, I I might say that I'm I mean like Kim Kim says that everyone can be a geographer so <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there's still hope for me that I'm going to be a geographer one day. Oh, I don't know if I can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But definitely like trying to be interdisciplinary. Mm -hmm. Although I do think that the the real potential in interdisciplinarity is when you can do that in a group, like in a team. Of, yeah, exactly. You know, like an interdisciplinary project. So yeah. that's really fascinating. But we, as individual researchers, we can try to move towards that. Which is where the science communication part comes yes. in. <laughs> um, but, uh, but first of all, I just noticed that this is the first time we are recording with two people in the room. So the slightly more Portuguese sounding or Brazilian sounding voice is Rebecca and the Spanish sounding voice is Rema. So um, maybe to keep track of this. Uh, yeah, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, so let's, let's get into your project. You've got this really interesting project called Once Upon a Time. Um, a scientific fairy tale. Yes, to... A scientific fairy tale. Yes. <laughs> Full to... name. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, give us the inside scoop. What is it? It's I I, I find it super interesting. It's a science communication project, mm -hmm. as as you mentioned. So it started in 2016 mm -hmm. um, as part of a competition from Business Up in Dialogue, Science in Dialogue. Yeah. Uh, that. That's an initiative from the Bundesministerium for Bildung, BMBF, Bildung und Forschung. Yeah, uh, so the, the oh, German mm, Ministry for, for Education and Research. Yeah, that's all. Like Very good. Thank you. Yeah, in 2016-2017, it was the Meeres und Ozeane year, uh, year mm. so Seas and Oceans year, mm -hmm. and there was this competition that was called Show Your Science, in mm -hmm. which 
scientists were encouraged to develop projects to communicate about what they do. Yeah. Um, some people at the Marum, where I was working at the time, came with the idea of writing stories with some scientific content. Mm -hmm. Initially, they thought for children, and then they got the feedback from the agency, ah, everybody's doing things for children, do you want to move a bit broader? And then they thought, okay, then let's do something with the idea that adults read the stories together with the children so mm -hmm. that both can learn about it. And then I joined in 2017 when the project was granted as part of the competition. Okay, but it, it wasn't always fairy tales, was it? It was like any story to, to communicate your science? Yeah, I mean, fairy tale, uh, the name was chosen because everybody can relate, yeah. relate to, yeah, yeah, okay. to that. At some point we realized maybe the, the name is not ideal because it may <laughs> send also like mocking. Oh, does the, it? The, the, the science, maybe in a, in a well, a scientific fairy tale, like, oh, is it true? Is it not true? Oh, yeah, I didn't but, think about this. But, 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 but it was <laughs> <Me neither. laughs> uh, simply the, the idea of a fairy tale is every kind of popular story that mm -hmm. can be told uh, by boys. Right, okay. Uh, it doesn't necessarily need to be written, like, mm -hmm. like thinking of the Green Brothers and, and stuff like that. Yeah. And when did you join, Rebecca? So I was invited at the end of 2017, mm -hmm. uh, so I guess maybe one or two years after the, the project started yeah. by a colleague, Celia Santos, she wrote to me, she's from Portugal, she said, oh, we need help with the Portuguese translation team. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and she told me about the project and I thought it was, it was just fascinating. Like, um, I, I actually I had never heard, I have to say, anything was very new. Mm -hmm. And I already knew some people that were in the project, Dharma, and I was very excited to join. So yeah. I immediately said yes, yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> was it always supposed to run for, for this long or was it like capped at... at like no, it, it, it was meant to, to run for this competition phase. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was granted 2016 and it's very good that you mentioned Dharma because we should credit here the, the original people starting it, mm -hmm. Dharma Reyes, Sandy Bonner, Gerd Jansen, Paula Mendoza, Hadar, Hadar El Sajif, I think those, um, Pamela Cartes, Russell Cartes, uh, those were like the, the core people, Vicente Duran. Uh, Where are they all the, based? All at Marum? Or? Back in the days, they, they were most of them at the Marum. Okay. Uh, Pamela was here at the ICBM. Mm -hmm. uh, Hadar was part at the Marum, part at Haifa University in Israel. Oh, okay. So, so those were like the, the core people who, who developed the idea and then people starting joining um, taking different roles yeah, maybe uh, we with the, within the project. Yeah, we've said Marum so many times now, what is it? Uh, just... Marum is the Center for Environmental Marine Sciences Yeah. Uh, at the Bremen University. Yeah, okay. Okay, and what is your specific individual involvement in, in all of this? Maybe we can start with Rebecca. Yeah. Yeah, sure. So as I said, I, I joined specifically the Portuguese translation team. Mm -hmm. So my first effort was, or the first test was, let's translate the stories that we already have. I think by then, I think the first book was already published or it was like in the pipeline. Mm -hmm. But so the, the three first languages are usually English, German, and Spanish. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that we expand from there to other languages. So the Portuguese team said, okay, Portuguese time. <laughs> Let's do this. And yeah, so that's what I did. Um, and after translating, so after we were done, I actually thought, okay, maybe I can write a story. <laughs> okay, so, so, so the stories, yeah, okay, right. So at first you just translated somebody else's stories and yeah. now you're doing your own? Exactly. Yeah. I already did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> done, done, done. So, yeah, so it was great experience. And like, you know, when you're translating, you're reading the stories and you're like, wow, that's so exciting. Maybe I can write one myself. <laughs> yeah. How, how long are they like on average? I mean, they're supposed to be very short. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. yeah maybe 10 pages, something that okay. you may read aloud in 20 minutes, like yeah. an hour. And, and what's it like? Is it like a, like an actual little fairy tale story? Like Grim Brothers? Yeah. yeah, you We've... didn't read any of them. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. I wanted the, I wanted the full experience here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, there, there, there was freestyle, so they are everybody very could could choose how okay. to write. So, so it's totally up to the author. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are very, very different. Like we have some that are, you know, like poetry. You know, that's yeah, mm -hmm. like poems, and 
we have some that are a bit longer, some that are a bit shorter, some that have, you know, a narrator and basically just a narrator, some that have actual characters that are talking. The characters are sometimes animals or, you know, people. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> and then they're all bound in a book? Yes. And sold? Uh, or given away? or. No, the, the, the books are in, in the... Uh, we made... We had the, a lot of support from from the Marum all the time, so mm -hmm. we have a space there in the website where the, the books are uploaded as PDF and mm -hmm. can be downloaded for then, free. Uh, for free. Nice. And then at some point we also did our own website to, to have a bit more freedom and more easy access to change contents or, or include things. Mm -hmm. And the books are also there as PDF to, to be downloaded freely. And we are in conversation with a printer in Bremen. I, I just phoned him this morning indeed. Um, oh, really? Hopefully that will be coming soon, that we will be able to buy the, the books at, at cost price. Mm -hmm. uh, so we don't want to, to make any, any, any win. Yeah. And they will be print on demand. Okay. And, and yeah, what's, what's your individual involvement? You're in the Spanish team? or No, I, I joined quite from the beginning. Yeah. In 2017, and I, I just wanted to write a story, mm -hmm. and then uh, I become I became more and more involved because, yeah, you, we're jumping a bit back and forth. But uh, yeah. I'm gonna make a small parenthesis before you ask uh, whether we were thinking that it will be this long the project. Mm -hmm. So we started within this competition uh, of science and dialogue, and that was for a year. So yeah. there we really had a hard deadline when we have to submit. Uh, a product. Okay. And because of that, uh, I, I became more and more involved because I was maybe a bit of the seniors in, in the group and mm -hmm. I was seeing um, if we don't push it a bit harder, we are not going to make it. Yeah. And in kind of natural way, I, I became part of the coordination team and, and then I stay in that role mm -hmm. for, for a second round. So after we finished the first book, that was for the competition, and we have our three languages, and mm -hmm. we won one of the prizes of the competition. Oh yeah, congrats! Uh, and then we were very enthusiastic, yeah. uh, and we have the, the newcomers, like Rebecca joining for translating, but then mm -hmm. getting motivated to write a story, and then we thought, okay, let's go for a second round. Right. And that's why the, the project got uh, extended, yep. and for the second round we got money from a Spanish association of researchers in mm -hmm. Germany. I presented the, the project in one of our symposiums, uh, uh, and they were like, oh, it's cool! <laughs> uh, are you continuing? Well, we're trying, but you know, we don't have money now. We'll give you money, write a proposal! <laughs> yeah, oh, really? Nice! <laughs> yeah, uh, and that's how we could produce the, the second book that we also released in February last year. Yeah. Sweet. And, and do, do you know how, how long it's going to be funded for? Or? Uh, so so the, the, the funding was a certain amount of money that we could freely use. Oh, I see. Okay, so so right. we allocated and, and that was also part of my role. So I, I stay as main coordinator of the project and managing the, the budget. Like, okay, we really need someone who checks the language at, yeah, at right. the end. Uh, then contracting that people, how much does it cost? Mm -hmm. Many scientists in the second round uh, didn't write stories, but made illustrations. So mm -hmm. then we could save money on paying illustrators. That, that was a big chunk of the money for, for the first book. Yeah, what's more expensive? The writers themselves or the illustrations? The, the, the writers are for free because oh, right, okay, right. scientists. Yeah. Um, some of them were thinking, oh, we're doing this uh, for free, and it's like, well, you can also think of it as part of your job as scientist, yes. of course, at the end, yeah. publications will count more in your CV than this, but hopefully no, there will that's... be a, a time when uh, CVs of scientists will be seen in a bit more broader way than yeah, not exactly. only the number of Maybe that's an interesting discussion there. <laughs> Because Emma just said, oh, yeah, you know, you don't get paid, you're a scientist. And it's just like, well, <laughs> we're kind of used to that now, right? It's just like, well, you don't get paid, you're a scientist. So we end up like accumulating all these tasks that mm. are kind of bundled together as like the job of a scientist. And yep. yeah, could, you know, range from like writing a paper to doing admin work. Mm. And yeah, I guess it's, it, it is a bit problematic because we, as Emma said, like we actually... I mean, we're producing this very interesting material, but sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes it really counts is, you know, publications and how many publications you have. So, yeah. 
but do you have a feeling that it's maybe changing like that the weight uh, that is given to to science communication is, is getting more now and that it's actually encouraged uh, I really have the feeling it is changing yeah. but we are not there yet mm -hmm. yes. so, so when I said uh, the writers were for free because we are we were anyway pay as scientists yeah. I mean it in a good way, mm -hmm. in the good way that yes. scientists should be encouraged and appreciated for also taking some of the working time to do these things. Mm -hmm. At the end, most of us were doing this a little bit in our working time, but mostly in our free time because we had the, we had or we fell or we were in this this bubble of pressure of, ah, but uh, I need to publish papers otherwise I don't get the, the next position. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, even for the second book. Uh, I did most of the things during my unemployment time when I was waiting for an advanced training that I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So that was in a way lucky at the end because then uh, I had something that kept me busy uh, and active uh, and so on and I could really invest a lot of time in the project and really push it to, to finish the, the second book. Yeah. Because since we didn't have this hard deadline like with the first book, then mm -hmm. it was a bit more diluted. Mm -hmm. many of the scientists were also moving to other positions, so it was really more difficult than, than the first one to, yeah. to really get it. And there I, I realized how much time you actually invest when, when you are not doing that parallel to other things, but I was doing that from morning to, to evening, like, this is a full-time job. Yeah, right. I mean, not maybe all the time so intense, because there are moments that you, you have a lot to do, the moments <laughs> where you are waiting for things to, to happen or getting things back to to read, to correct, to, to whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, since then, every time I have the opportunity, I say, uh, I hope that soon uh, scientists will be appreciated more in a broader sense and yeah. not only on the publication output, but yeah. also on other. That might also be an explanation for why science is so slow, because they're doing so, or we are doing so many jobs. Yeah, yeah, we have a lot on our plates, you know. Yeah. yeah, but I agree with him. I think we're moving towards that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it is going a bit slow, and I think we need to push. I mean, I see a few initiatives or a few institutes, like I think HFMB is great at that, I have to mm -hmm. say, yeah, like yeah. encouraging you um, to, to do that kind of work mm -hmm. and even having like paid positions yeah. <laughs> that are directly related to that. But yeah, we still have a long way to go, but I agree with him. I think we're going there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Excellent. And for. So the, the plan going forward with it now is the second book is, is published and ready and and that's it? Or what's the plan going forward? <laughs> I, I let Rebecca... Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I mean, I, know, I was just checking the website today and I, I saw that, they, I mean, the, the three languages that I mentioned, like English, um, German and Spanish, they are ready. So mm -hmm. they can be downloaded, the second book. For the other languages, I did see French. So I see those, mm -hmm. the, the, the French translation team is just really amazing <laughs> they did a great job our team is still i think we are finalizing like really the the very last details but we are we are done with the the, the translation themselves it's just like a matter now of um design and what is it called like to to make everything fit nicely you know with the illustrations yeah, the, the sort of the last titling. stage yeah something yeah like that. it's a the part that i'm not directly involved yeah. with um but that should be the the stage where we are at right now and hopefully the Portuguese translation of the second book. I mean, the first book has been translated in many, many languages. If you check the web page, what do we have? Like French, Portuguese, Chinese, Sorry. Italian, yeah. Filipino, Filipino. Too many languages. So yeah. many to languages because the, yeah. the team was so diverse. Maybe something that we didn't really mention, but like the people um, that have been that, you know, were uh, involved and maybe are not in more right now, but just pass <laughs> through the project. I mean, th they were so diverse from a lot of countries, like yeah. everywhere. So we have people from Brazil, from Mexico, from Spain, from Israel, from Italy, from France, from from the Philippines. I don't know. <laughs> How big is the team? Roughly, uh, has been around thirty people. Oh right. So, so few of the people from the first round stay for the second round, also because of moving, mobility mm -hmm. in academia, yeah. uh, or because realizing, well, this was really a lot of work, <laughs> 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 maybe I cannot afford it again at this moment of, yeah. of my career. Yeah, absolutely. So, so yeah, there, there are these two 30 people groups, more or less. Great. And um, for, like, maybe maybe getting a bit more into, into what you do, what what is your individual 
storytelling style or, or what, what are the stories you've written? So for me, for the first book, I did try to do this fairy tale mm-hmm. style. And indeed, indeed I, I pick up a, a well-known fairy tale story or the characters of, of a well-known fairy tale story. Uh, I pick up the Bremen uh, town musicians mm-hmm. because I thought this is a way to, to get the, the people at least in Bremen uh, and abroad as well, because it, it is a well-known story, more in touch with the, with the story. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, my star, um, my inspiration a bit for, for the story, it was uh, Ulrike Prange at the Marum, uh, at the communications office. She gave us a, a workshop about to, to help us a bit with the writing thing, and she was saying, like, the first sentence is so important. There, you, you really okay. need to pay attention. And I thought about my favorite first sentence, that is Don, Don Quixote, uh, in a place in La Mancha, blah, 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 yeah. blah, blah. And then I was like, in a place in Bremen, the Bremen, the musicians, climate change, sea level rise. <laughs> and from there, I, I, I developed the, the story. Okay. And for the second one, I don't really remember. I, I, I clearly remember that I, I was in my living room, <laughs> and I had been doing a lot of work uh, reading the stories of, of, of the other people for the second book. I'm mm-hmm. feeling, oh, I, I don't have idea for an idea for this second book. Yeah. And I don't know how. I started to, to think about something funny, about a paleo proxy, a proxy something that you use to, to learn about something that you cannot directly measure. Mm-hmm. And it is a funny proxy because it's poo of an animal. Yeah. And, and this animal is also a funny animal because it looks like a rat. What is it? What, what's it called? Uh, it is called Ratifante. No, Ratifante <laughs> is, the, is the name that some friends of, of, my, of me and myself we gave it when we were in Namibia in holidays. Yeah, right. Because it looks like a rat, but okay. they are more related to elephants than mm-hmm. to rodents. So that's why well, we call it Rati. Fante, yeah. uh, and, and from the poo of these animals, they, they, they always poo in the same place. So, mm-hmm. so they, it is piling up. So at the end you have a, a column of poo That's crazy. That, that will also tell you about the food, all these generations yeah. of... Yeah, they have collected little, nicely uh, for you. <laughs> yeah, of little animals used to, used to eat. Uh, it is uh, called in English rock hyrax. Mm-hmm. Rock, rock? Rock hyrax. Okay, yeah. And, yeah. And, and that was your second yeah. story? Was yeah, and, like that, and that was my, my second story that it was like the animal narrating in a funny way <laughs> how they poo or <laughs> <laughs> how they like to poo. <laughs> and, and is that research you've done personally? No, I haven't done it personally, okay. but, but indeed I met some scientists that do that in, in South Africa and yeah. my PhD was uh, about the ocean circulation uh, around South Africa. Okay. And, and I actually emailed the guy like, hey, can you check that I'm not saying anything wrong here in, yeah. in this story? Uh, and he was also very excited about the, the story, like, oh, and I like the name Ratifante. I yeah. will use it in my scientific paper. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah sounds, sounds super yeah. interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, so at the professional writers, they, they say that there is no inspiration, there is hard work, like sitting there in front of the blank piece of paper yeah. uh, and write and write. <laughs> For me, not being a professional writer, I do need this kick of inspiration uh, somehow. And that comes also often when discussing with people, with interacting, uh, and then gets one idea pops up, and then they are it. That's a good point. Yeah. Very good exactly. point. Yeah. And what were you, Rebecca? <laughs> yeah, I guess, uh, yeah, just what Hemo was saying, like I wanted to do something that related to my work. So yeah. at the time I was doing my PhD um, in Brazil, I still work there, actually. I still do my research there. <laughs> so in where is it in Brazil? In North Brazil, on the Amazon coast, okay. in the state of Pará, mm-hmm. where the Pará Nusa come from. You only English? get the, uh, um, Brazil nuts. They're Bra- called in English. Oh, right, okay, yeah, yeah. Right. But but the German word, you can actually know which state in Brazil <laughs> they come from. I find that very interesting. Yeah. Uh, actually, they're not just from there, but mainly from there. And, I have um, no idea it's because of the state. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a state in Brazil called Pará, yeah. Pará, <laughs> how we say it. And that's where I do my, my research. That's where I did my PhD, and I'm still working there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so this place is, like, full of these beautiful mangrove forests, you know, and, and they are just amazing. And I felt like I had to write a story that, you know, was about the mangroves and the animals that live there. Yeah. 
so yeah so that's what i did i mean we did have a few workshops in denhorst about mm -hmm. like writing and storytelling so that was also a bit inspiring and of course i had already translated all these stories i mean together with the rest of the team but mm -hmm. you know i was really inspired at the time i said okay i can do this it can be much harder than writing an academic paper right <laughs> well <laughs> we can circle back to that but i can tell you that at least this one took much, much longer than any scientific paper that I have <laughs> written it? so far. All right. <laughs> yes, I was actually, I, I was checking again, like the, you know, the history of my online doc and when I created the doc and, and I actually had the last edit. So I so I started writing in May 2018. Okay. And I think the English version was ready just shortly after the, the book was published in February 2021. Oh, wild. So, okay. yeah, so it was like, two and a half or maybe three years in the making of the That's story. It's a lot of effort going into that. It's a lot of effort. So yeah, like Hema was saying, maybe there are people that can just sit down and, you know, get mm -hmm. like, I don't know where they get, they get the inspiration from. But <laughs> I mean, we were inspired by our own work or the work of people yeah. uh, that were close to us. But still, it's like you have to think about, OK, who will be the characters and you know mm -hmm. and and i have to say one interesting thing about once upon a time is that we get so much feedback <laughs> do you okay. yeah so for example when you publish uh or when you submit a paper you usually get like two or three reviewers right mm -hmm. so that is already intense yeah <laughs> i think for this story i had at least five people oh geez looking okay. at it and from from all all, all scientists or all like Anyone that was involved in the project could actually give okay. it back. Mm -hmm. So That's mainly great. from Hema, Hadar, and it was like Manfred towards the end, right? Like he oh, he did like the final sort of editing. Yeah, and Denise. Uh, Denise was, was also, also uh, yeah, she gave very, a lot. Anyone critics. in the project could do it. Yeah. So, and mm -hmm. I also have to say, um, I started on my own, but then somewhere along the line, I realized, okay, I need help. <laughs> yeah. So I got a colleague, a really good friend, uh, Guilherme Abuchala. He joined as a co-author. Mm -hmm. And he really uh, helped me like shape the story, improve it, you know, like change the characters, change the plot. So okay. the, the story turned out very different than what I wrote, yeah. but but much better. Yeah, are you happy with it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm very happy with it now, but it was a very hard and long process and yep. I had no idea. <laughs> Maybe if I knew I wouldn't have done it. <laughs> yeah, what were the challenges for you in, in writing this? Yeah, I guess like not being a professional, um, Story like teller. storyteller yeah. or you know like writing for children because that is something that we talked about this workshops that we had it's not the same as writing a, a paper mm -hmm. it's very different like the language is very different and and you know you have to tell a story you have to think about the the target audience which is so hard because yeah. we're writing a story and we're like oh my gosh i have no idea who's going to read it and uh you know how much i have to explain certain concepts mm -hmm. We actually always after the stories we have a, a session called like do you want to know more would you like to know more so we explain which is really nice about the the short stories that we have really scientific concepts like what is a protected area mm -hmm. what are mangroves and yeah but you know in the story itself you have to think about okay yeah, the plot you know it has to be interesting but it cannot be super complicated you know i'm not going to talk about like all the possible you know like factors related to the creation of a protected area mm -hmm. and the regulations and i mean it's for children even though we also met adults but so <laughs> that was the hardest part i have to say to think about something that was interesting that was accurate that is also very very hard to do yeah, like but it doesn't matter how much you try to you know make it simple it still has to be scientifically accurate yeah so that is so hard i have to say how, how do you gauge the level of detail? Like whenever I, I even write a Twitter summary for my papers, it's like, okay, this isn't as detailed as I would like it, but how do you, w when do you know it's still accurate, technically? It's it's a super ha hard uh, target to hit, I think. It's really hard. I guess that's yeah. where the feedback comes in. And yeah, it's very yeah, important. that's right. Because like, okay. you have other people um, reading it, and then they even, for example, Guilherme's, uh, my co-author he's also like a marine biologist mm -hmm. also working on mangroves so you know whenever i said something oh maybe you know that's oversimplified yeah. or you know you're simplifying so much that it's just not accurate anymore yeah so or maybe you can say it differently so that it still makes sense but it's less complicated um <laughs> yeah it was it, it's i mean i'm not sure if i found like the the right balance i have to say <laughs> i okay. hope i did but i guess you'll learn along the way so that's like the nice 
part about the whole thing. So yeah. You learn, and maybe the second story that I write will take maybe just one or two years. <laughs> <laughs> Are you happy with the, with the Portuguese version or happier with the English version? Oh, so I actually started with the Portuguese version. That's right. something that we discussed during these workshops. Like maybe try to write first in your own, like your native language. So, mm -hmm. and also my my story specifically had some 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 poetry sort of. Mm -hmm. So that was that that was hard even in Portuguese, but of course it was easier in Portuguese than in English. Yeah. So yeah, so I did that, and then I had to translate everything into English, which was very hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then I got all the feedback in English, yeah. and. After the even after the book was published, then I took the story onto the translation team, and then we had it translated back into Portuguese. Wild. That was intense. Yeah, that's also one of the reasons why that really takes that long because you you are more capable of freely developing your ideas in your native language, at mm -hmm. least for something that is not scientific related. So for something scientific related, I think uh, I will harder more in Spanish than, than in English. Okay. And then you translate it to English so that the, the, whole, the full team can read it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you get all the feedback. So then you start working with the English version. So at some point you, you need to go back to your ori original language. Uh, yeah. And that makes the, the, the process a, a, a bit longer. Absolutely. But yeah, yeah. It's the, the best way we, we can do it at the at yeah. the moment because mm -hmm. for for this really getting into the flow of writing nicely uh, and for for the general public yeah your mother language is and, and, and easier yeah mm -hmm. again like we're not doing that alone right we have this awesome team like giving us feedback and helping with the translation all our translations get like reviewed at least by one of us like mm -hmm. another person so i never translate alone and then we have it also professionally revised like by people that are you know, at least like researchers, like in the area of like linguistics, so they mm -hmm. actually check that for you if everything is sound and that's okay. great. So, so you 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 feel a bit more confident that yeah, uh, like maybe it's not perfect, but you yeah, know, absolutely. You have a yeah, lot yeah. of people to back you up. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah even in, in your mother language, you you make mistakes because mm -hmm. you yeah. you don't. You don't use that all the time, Absolutely, or, or, yeah. or, or, or we are not or professional writers. So, <laughs> I'm the so worst at it. I, I can't communicate my science accurately in German. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. But yeah, speaking of German, you, you, you both speak very, very good German. And, and also, like, I with, with this Once Upon a Time um, storytelling thing, you, you also did some stuff yeah. in German. Right? Yeah, we did. Yeah, and Recently. the last, last time together. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, 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 true. In June. It wasn't yeah. too long ago. Yeah. 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 What was that? That was in the Klimaban, so mm -hmm. that's uh, a tram in Bremen that with the initiative for Scientists for Future, the working group in Bremen. Mm -hmm. Now and then we organize talks within mm -hmm. the, this, this tram uh, and we also try to do something for, for the younger public. Yeah. Uh, so, so and they are in, in the last round, Rebecca and I uh, read one of the stories of the, of the second book. So the, the, the tram goes around the city in Bremen and, and you sit on it or stand on it? And we were standing. Okay. It was not easy. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually another challenge, another layer of challenge yeah. that I was not expecting because we had to read. So it was a reading event, right? Yeah. So it's not, okay. it's not like we can memorize. I mean, it's, it's yeah, a yeah. short story, but still long enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You cannot memorize it. So we had like, you know, a piece of paper and we had to read. I had to read a lot and, you know, I, I'm... I'm someone that gets easily gets you know like motion sick. <laughs> oh god! Oh no. <laughs> to me, it was very hard. And yeah. if you ask me like where we went with the tram, I like I have no idea. <laughs> I blacked <We're> out. <laughs> <laughs> I was just so focused on the reading and like, you know, also paying attention to the kids and whether yeah. they seem to be enjoying it or not. Okay. I just know that there were like a lot of curves and there were like some situations <laughs> where I had to hold on to the, yeah. you know. Like, That's so great. <laughs> But we did manage to read yeah, the yeah. whole story. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the tram is actually running in normal lines uh, for two years. D do you know what number? Uh, it, it changes. It changes, okay. Uh, right. So I have seen it in the six, in the eight, in the, in the four. Oh, right. uh, I'm very happy every time I see it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I, I point it out. For, for, for the talks, they are Sonderfahrten, so, ah. yeah. so they are special trips yeah. that they make uh, around starting oh, yeah. at the main office of the BSAG mm -hmm. uh, and then people have to re register that has also to do with the pandemic to, to mm -hmm. have a, yeah. a control yeah, yeah. On, on how many yeah. people get in uh, contact details uh, and so on yeah. and then it is a round trip mm -hmm. and we come back 
uh, we step out and then the, the next people get in and get the next talk. Sweet. And do you, is, it, is it a story that you've previously written or is it a completely new one? Or? Uh, we, we pick one from, from the second book that mm -hmm. uh, we didn't write ourselves but we had used that one already in some reading events. So it was also okay. a bit modified, so, so to, to make it a bit shorter for, mm -hmm. for telling uh, and to, to make the, maybe the dialogues a bit more vivid. Yeah. So, so we, we knew the story well. It was not our own, it was from Camila Neder, who okay. used yeah. to work at Abbey. Uh, she hasn't finished yet, so maybe she's she will be coming back yeah. uh, at Abbey. So she's between Argentina, Cordoba and, and Abbey. Sweet. And uh, do you, like you mentioned that you sort of monitored the, the children if they're, if they're liking it or not. Did, did, uh, how, how do you think the pickup was? Did you get any feedback? I think it was really amazing. We asked yeah. some questions like, you know, when you're reading, it's kind of hard to get the feeling like, are, you know, did they, are they like understanding what we're saying? But afterwards we had, you know, some, some time to actually talk to them about the story and ask, okay, what did you understand? What is the name of the characters? And the story, I mean, we did try to make it more concise and a bit, you know, easier to understand, but it was still kind of dense, you know, there are like some concepts and, you know, like even some words in English, like we had to say like Potter Cove. <laughs> and Potter Cove? Potter Cove uh, is just the name of the, 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 the place. cove, the oh, place right. where, yeah, yeah. The, the, where Plumy, the, the character is from. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so we were a bit worried, like, are they gonna, you know, get distracted by, you know, these complicated words or, mm -hmm. but we were asking them, okay, what happened and what, what did you understand? And they seemed to have understood. I mean, I, I had the impression that they understood, you know, at least the main message of the story. Mm -hmm. They were incredibly aware of, you know, climate change. Mm -hmm. It was not news to them, you know, like they knew what we were talking about. Yeah. Um, they knew about climate change, about, you know, protests. Some of them had been to protests and, you know, they knew what had to be done. <laughs> they mentioned both, you know, individual actions that we can take, but also like mm -hmm. collective actions, like going to protest, joining a collective. And I was very surprised to hear that kind of awareness. How, how, how what was the age range of, of the kids? Maybe between yeah. six and 11, 12. Yeah, some okay. were even like younger, had the yeah. impression they were like some five, yeah. whatever Yeah, and there were some quite yeah. small um, and the older one was going yeah. to the protest um, yeah, and yeah. weighing himself a lot. Okay. Uh, and uh, speaking surprising. about density, Rebecca was saying that the story was still a bit dense mm -hmm. and there was also some density in the story in the sense that it was about male water carrying a lot of sediment oh, into yeah. this scope in, in Antarctica and affecting the, the benthic life. Yeah. So, so yeah. Yeah, it's not something that they can immediately relate to. Yeah, it's yeah, not absolutely. like, for example, the, the, the musicians which is a story that they probably know already. Yeah. So this one is like far, far away in Antarctica. And you know, yeah. they probably, I don't know if I've ever heard about Potter Cove, <laughs> probably not. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, but, but they seem to have understood everything. That's or great. Maybe, yeah. maybe you did the, the, because you did such a good job of, of uh, telling it, of communicating it. Yeah. <laughs> I tried <laughs> so the, being like motion sick and like, I'm like, I'm trying to read this in German. <laughs> oh God, I, I was doing the, the, fu the funny part, like screaming when the sediment was coming. <laughs> ah, <it's okay>. yeah. <laughs> so I was a narrator, right? And him yeah. was the, was Plumi and yeah. you know, the characters that were actually like speaking. What is Plumi? What? Plumi is the main character. Yeah, it's the, the name. Uh, it's Plumi from Pluma in Spanish, that is a uh, feather. And it is a, a feather. safe feather. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, right. Safe yeah. Yeah. Uh, ah, okay. Of the coral. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. In, in the Antarctic. In the Antarctic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I know nothing about Arctic yeah, Benthic see, Lion. So, <laughs> no, no, Arctic. I, I have to say, me neither. Like, I learned a lot just, like, reading the story, translating the mm -hmm. story. Yeah. Just, you learn a lot also from environments where you you don't work and you don't know so much about. Incredible. Yeah, the kids also learned. For example, <laughs> for example that, that's where, where you want to be accurate. So mm -hmm. if you yes. want your story in Antarctica, you, you pick up a, a species that lives there. Yeah, yeah. You don't pick up a species that lives in, in the Arctic or mm -hmm. anywhere else where it's cold, but doesn't live in Antarctica. Yeah. So this, uh, there is a lot of freedom in the stories because, yeah, we need characters or mm -hmm. so then the, the animals speak or the plants speak or, or whatever, but they have to be the animals and the plants that belong to that environment. Yeah, you're right. So if your favorite turtle is the green turtle, but it only lives in the Atlantic, you cannot place it in the Pacific or, yeah. or you cannot make it 
and make a, a world round because it doesn't in yeah. reality. So it, it has to stay. Sense. Mm-hmm. So yeah. normally at this part we get to the to your CVs, but because you're two and and there, there's so much interesting stuff here to talk about, maybe we'll just get into why or, or or when did you catch the science communication bug? Like when when I mean you you both speak uh, an, an a heap of languages. Like uh, let me <laughs> let me check. Um, like for for Rebecca, it's it's Portuguese, English, and German fluent, then Spanish advanced, then basic French, Italian, Chinese. So uh, <laughs> I, I, I guess that lies the foundation. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. I, I I can say that it was definitely something that attracted me, like in a project, right? To see like so many languages and it, mm-hmm. and the team again was so diverse. Uh, was no, yeah. So during my PhD, I um, already had a, a, a science communication or awareness raising project. Mm-hmm. So it's something that. Yeah, that I'm attracted to, I can say. Yeah. Uh, it's not something new, it's not something that started with Once Upon a Time. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's all throughout your CV, there's always outreach, always uh, yeah. springs out at me. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's I, I did a whole bunch of like internships yeah. at tourist visitor centers, like turtle, yeah, recovery centers. And mm-hmm. yeah, I've always really enjoyed that. So it's not something new. Um, but I, I, I have to say that it was during my PhD where it really approached or it really got closer to my to my research. Mm-hmm. So up until then, it was something sort of on the side and not really connected. Mm-hmm. And during my PhD, I actually found a way to connect both. So I used like the immediate results that I got from my from my field work to produce this what I call awareness raising material. So science communication material that I yeah that i actually was able to distribute in this area where i worked and even the feedback that i got on the material i could use it like for my research Mm -hmm. so it was like a you know things were combined and it was like going back and forth between like research and science communication and this is also also something that i'm still doing (laughs) still (laughs) trying to do so yeah so the this project that i mentioned it was a a small grant that i got from the ruffer foundation Mm -hmm. in the uk and i'm applying for a second round of the same grant and i want to do something similar for my research here at HFMB. Oh, and great. Has to being able to combine both things. Yeah. And they can walk hand in hand. Nice. Yeah. Science communicator through and through. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but when was your PhD? And, and in, in Brazil what? only? Or? Oh, no. It, well, yeah, the, the few work was in Brazil. Yeah. So I went there like several times and yeah. yeah. yeah but I, I did it in Bremen. Like I was at ZMT. Right. Yeah. But at the... S- Lightness Center for Tropical Marine Research. That's the one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, and the University of Bremen, of course, yeah. and a collaboration with the um, Institute for Coastal Studies uh, mm-hmm. at the University of Pará. Mm-hmm. So the state of Pará. Yeah. <laughs> now you know it's in Brazil. Um, yeah, and I'm still working with uh, with uh, the same institute for the postdoc research. Right. So. Yeah. And and what exactly do you do now? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So now I'm looking at specifically at what I'm, we call social ecological networks. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm looking at you know like how people are connected for certain conservation projects. So social groups are connected, but also how they're connected to the environment, to ecological um, systems or ecosystems. So yeah, that's what I'm looking at now, and um, still in Brazil. So as my main study site, I might go to other places yeah <laughs> <laughs> but brazil yeah is uh the main thing for now yeah. and um have you always yeah. gone back to brazil for for field work or yeah yeah, yeah. I, I was there like every year and nice. yeah it was great uh yeah hope i can do that again of course there was this big uh really long hiatus like with the pandemic yeah. uh yeah that was a uh, but it was i managed i'm really happy i did <laughs> yeah nice what about you come on I always had kind of some interest in science communication, mm-hmm. but it was indeed through through this project that uh, I really noticed how much fun uh, I have, and yeah. how satisfactory it is, uh, how much I like the the exchange with with the with the people. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm also in, in in a way that make me. Or, or help me to to decide to to do an advanced training uh, and to change my mind setting because I, I I was explaining so many things about the current climate change and about climate change in the past mm-hmm. and then often was the question what can we do yeah 
and there I didn't have answers or not answers that were for me scientifically grounded. So yeah. like, oh, I have read a little bit about this and that. Uh, and then I decided, okay, I really want to learn about these things. And oh, nice. then I did an advanced training in sustainability, mm -hmm. renewable energies, environmental law. Mm -hmm. what, uh, what kind of training is this? Is this by a uni? Or? It, it was at the University of Breme, okay. uh, Academy for Vita Bildung. Yeah, okay. So it was a, a full year of courses, three months of uh, internship. Uh, and I really enjoy like going back to school in, yeah. in a way and learning about things that I always wanted to learn but I didn't have the capacity during my yeah. research career because it's like, well, I'm sense. reading complicated things all the time. Uh, <laughs> in the evening, uh, I don't feel like reading more complicated things yeah. even though uh, I would like to. But yeah, I'm not one of these persons who can work 60 hours yeah. <laughs> in a week <laughs> and do everything well. Yeah, uh, and also the, the, the part of organizing the, the this project, uh, it was also fun mm -hmm. in, in a way. Uh, I also realized, well, I'm maybe m I have more tendencies to generally, so I really like reading all these stories and commenting on all these stories and That's what great. I do, do not know about the topic. Uh, I read something and mm -hmm. then I can make some reasonable comments. Um, and this also opened my mind to other kind of jobs and how it's... Yeah how I ended here and I am a scientific coordinator now. Yeah, so exactly. Yeah, that's like, uh, I will be doing this in, in another scale, uh, like coordinating the, the scientific work yeah. at the institute in, in some of the projects, not yeah. in everything. But, but, but you're organizing um, or, or you're science communicator for, for all of the projects or for a specific one? or um... uh, for, for these two, two books. So, so right. I, I was coordinating these two groups of people, of 30 people. Yeah. That it was not always easy because everybody yeah, yeah. had their PhDs, their, their postdocs running, uh, yeah. and you need to, to get things done anyway. Yeah. And you know, people are doing that mostly in the free time. So, so it's how to, to have, a, like you say in German, a link <laughs> hang hang. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, left hand? Le left hand. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. To, to keep the group together, motivated, yeah. happy, um, producing, uh, and getting to a, to a result. Yeah. Um, and I enjoy it. So, yeah. So I thought, yeah, that can be something for me. So, yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, so that's exactly what you're doing now, or, or that led you to the job here at HFMB yeah. as science coordinator. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and so, so you would like to continue doing that? In principle, yes. Yeah. I, I have just started, so I still it is still too early for for me to, to say how is my daily job here. But yeah, it's it's developing in in, in a way I, I like. So. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. What, what do you organize? Like, what's the main task you organize here? My, my main task is uh, organizing, well, in principle, organizing the, the writing of an excellent cluster proposal mm -hmm. that at the end is gonna be a bit changed, uh, that idea. It will be finally clarified during the, the next mm -hmm. weeks. So, like, uh, and, and then uh, I will be organizing some workshops here and there yeah. and some the, of the interaction with the, the groups of sustainability at the Uni Oldenburg yeah. um, within the working groups here, trying to enable more uh, interaction, more yeah. working together. Very much needed. Do you work a lot with, with Ruth? Um, on uh, not directly. Okay. Uh, maybe it will come a bit in, in the future, yeah. but it's really for, for the overall for the umbrella of the full institute so i'm for a small part okay here easy and and for you what's uh, rebecca what's next for you do you think um how, how long is your project here oh yeah so um i have three years okay which like six months are gone <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> yes i have two years and a half and yeah. i think the next steps are the actual field work mm -hmm. which is what i want to do on the upcoming months um, so I'll be able to look at as I mentioned like this social cultural networks mm -hmm. and it basically involves talking to people which I absolutely love yeah <laughs> <laughs> we can tell <laughs> yeah but like it's it's even different like when you are you know they are they are basically um, a local communities right like mm -hmm. human in this case, I'm talking about human communities. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so talking to them, I, I mean, I could that. talk to fish communities, maybe that's, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if some people could do it. But in my case, yeah. specifically, it's about like human communities. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's what I did in my PhD. And it was just amazing. I, I would enjoy it. I, w I always enjoyed it so much. And I thought I need to keep doing that. I need to keep um, interacting with people and 
listen, I mean, listening from them, you know, their perceptions, their ideas, their opinions, their values, mm-hmm. and, and their knowledge. I mean, they know so much, right, about yeah. the mangroves. I mean, of course, we have this, you know, scientific, what we call scientific, quote unquote, we cannot see that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm the, doing like, quote unquote, quotes, with yeah. My, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, <your> marks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, um, yeah, but they, they have so much knowledge, you know, like, and, and we learn so much from them and we try. So basically what my uh, outreach project was doing was trying to build this bridge. Mm -hmm. So not just, it's not just science communication in this sense of like one directional flow, right? Like from science to the rest of the, the (laughs) interest groups, but more in the sense of like building this dialogue, because I think, you know, it's not like we need to, we need to be understood by mm-hmm. by the rest of the community but also in the sense of like well there's a lot that we don't don't understand either right so like this exactly yeah multi-directional yeah. flow of uh information yeah sweet so um this is already uh, uh, a bit off script i think we went a bit off script but only because your your uh, science communication project is so awesome and sounds so interesting so i had to spend more time on this yeah, and, and the, I would like to, to go back to yeah. a question that Absolutely. stayed kind of open because you, you were saying, yeah, and this, this project uh, got so extended yeah. and what you expect in that. And there, Rebecca emailed me in, in March or in April. Do you remember? Maybe you, you want to say something? <laughs> no, I actually don't remember. <laughs> Okay. I, so, I so email she, you a lot. I have the feeling. <laughs> she wrote me at some point saying, "Hey, hey, I'm working now at this school institute in in Oldenburg. <laughs> oh, I see. Uh, and I'm thinking about introducing the project. Oh, yes. What do you think about it? And I was like, just give me a few weeks because maybe I'm coming as well. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just it was, uh, it being was really invited funny. for the interview or yeah, something. Yeah, it was oh, really crazy. funny. Yeah. I told her like, Hema, I'm, I'm at this really cool institute now and I want you know everyone to get to know once upon a time and maybe yeah. we can have more people to join. Um, yeah, so maybe that's something that we can do here. We can maybe Absolutely. organize a, a, what we, we call here like this research seminar, right? We have um, these presentations every couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. So we could do that and it, yeah, talk about the project and maybe yeah, if anyone shouldn't. is interested in writing a story, yeah, um, I, I, I would not tell anyone how, how long it oh, takes exactly, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, and how much work it is. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah, I'll edit it out. Only, yeah. only the people that listen to the podcast will know that it's really hard work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Otherwise, we're going to say, oh, it's easy peasy. You know, you sit down in front of your laptop and you... Yeah, I think I completely <laughs> underestimated this until I talk to you now. <laughs> This is incredible. I mean, I don't know. Maybe there are some people that can do that. You know, I'm not going to say that yeah. it's a general thing. But in my case, it was definitely a lot of Yeah, it, it is also, you have all the other things to do. So so yeah. even when you get the, the reviews, maybe you, you don't address them immediately. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, with scientific papers, so sometimes you, you get personally touched by the reviews like yeah ah, yes, i was absolutely. doing a good job uh, uh, yeah. and with this is even more harder because it it's, is? Okay. It's, it's, it's a product of your heart your your story yeah. that you you thought it's so nice so cool uh, and yeah. then you get the critics uh, and you need some time first to digest <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> and good then you know. realize mm, yeah i see the point <laughs> i'm That's gonna okay. change it yeah. but i really like so much this sentence yeah but nobody understands that sentence you know? but it's it sounds so good no no it's, it's <laughs> <laughs> only to you yeah. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's, it's a bit, m- yeah. It gets more to the to the personal oh, yeah. part of of writing and, and of feeling yes. like what is your taste and what is the other taste and and what is something that people will be able to understand or, or not. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I guess once you create a story, it's really hard to let go of it, right? Like mm-hmm. you have the story, you have the characters. Yes. So if you have to change something like the plot, or you have to let some characters go you're like no (laughs) (laughs) No. so it is hard it is kind of hard yeah those are insights that i've never heard about storytelling so this (laughs) is exceptionally incredible and and valuable i I, I bet if if you speak with any writer it it will he or she will be telling something similar uh i i guess yeah I hope. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> but anyway, maybe it's w- just with, us. <laughs> the, with the pod- podcast, we, we can make some first advertisement. Like, hey, exactly. people <laughs> at High FMB, maybe we can produce a fair book of One Soup on a Time, oh, scientific yes. fairy tale. Yes. Is there funding for it? Would there be funding for it? Not yet. Uh, not yet. Okay. That will be the next step. Okay. First, getting a critical mass of people motivated, yeah. writing, yeah, sure. and then... 
get uh, onto uh, once uh, upon uh, a time. Uh, I'm sure that yeah. the, the money could be work around. Yeah, we'll we'll link it in the in the podcast description for sure. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, we're almost at an hour mark. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you have anything that you wanna that wasn't mentioned that you wanna still mention that you wanna say? Anything goes. <laughs> no, I will just say thank you to anyone who has listened. <laughs> Maybe just to situate, because um, I guess Hema is sort of working on her own here at HFMB, but I am uh, embedded sort of in the, the marine governance group. So I guess mm -hmm. it's also important to say that I am working in a group of amazing people and yeah, that really inspired me also to keep doing this outreach work. That's we great. have people working with arts and, you know, working also with um, local communities and yeah, it is it is really inspiring. Yeah, it motivates yeah, me. Exactly. To, yeah, and and Kim Peters, my Sorry. my advisor here, she's also an inspiration. Yeah. So yeah, pushing me towards geography, <laughs> <laughs> and maybe I'll be able to write a totally different story, more you know like geography um, oriented. Exactly. The other ones really like biology, so yeah, yeah, also expanding our fields of uh, research and also what we write. We're looking forward to it. Yes. <laughs> That's it. Thank you very much. And, thank you. Uh, Welcome. Everybody check out Once Upon a Time. You. Yeah, no worries. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Jan. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. Want to dive deeper? Surf over to hifmb.de or follow us on Twitter at hifmb underscore ol.